Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another chapter of Experiencer Interviews. And today we've got another amazing soul coming to us from the US. We have Zach Ag on board today. Zach is a husband and father of two kids, a paranormal researcher and a lifelong experiencer. He has helped countless people achieve contact through meditation using his C5 guide and is the creator of Project Contact. Zach was abducted at the young age of six by Grays wearing silvery, tight-fitting clothing and taken on board a craft in space, where he was eventually brought to a science station where a mantid stuck a large needle in his head behind his ear. Zach would receive downloads, live out contact experiences with his wife, and so much more. For many years, Zach thought it was all just a nightmare until he got regressed, searching for answers, and down the rabbit hole he went. So, Zach, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. So uh, before we get into your childhood experiences, are you aware if your family members, uh, immediate family ever had like contact or experiences with the paranormal? I've asked. Um, my mom has seen shadow people a couple of times past, like within the last 10 years. But like anything before that, I've asked and no, they've, they've not really had any experiences. So, so what did the shadow beings do? Uh, for my mom, she she just told me that she woke up like at like three o'clock and like she would see them standing at the the edge of their bed, just staring at her, and then she would go back to sleep, and that was about it. Okay. Nothing, nothing too crazy. Nothing, nothing wild. So cool. Um, so let's get into your uh, childhood contact. So, where were you born? Uh, I was born in Fort Hood, Texas. Um, lived there for about two years and then my family moved out here to, uh, Washington and that's when stuff really started getting crazy. Um, uh, I was abducted when I was six, um, throughout the years I would, uh, because of the insomnia from what I believed to be from that experience, um, I would always stay up late, couldn't sleep. I'd stare out the window that looked, overlooked the whole valley. And sometimes I would see these red balls of light fall down through cloudy nights and go into the forest that runs along the river that cuts our whole city in half. Um, I would watch those just fall in and just disappear. Um, I accidentally caught a, a UFO on camera by taking a random picture over the valley. Um, I could show you that. Um, and then once I got to my later teen years, I moved down to Arizona. Um, saw a bunch of stuff there, uh, more red balls of light that would, uh, disappear and then reappear in a different location and like helicopters would be chasing it. Um, I've seen like the triangular, uh, like three dots, three lights going across the mountain ranges. Um, I once saw an entire fleet of what looked like satellites, like a scatter plot of the, in, in the sky going across the whole sky. Um, that was around like 2012, 2013. Um, and then once we got back to, uh, my mid twenties, um, I moved out here to, or I moved to Chicago with my wife and we had a, that, that one experience with the tall white being that came into our house. Um, and then when we moved out to Washington, that's when we saw those cloaked beings that were, that looked like predator. Um, and then. Since then, we haven't really had any uh, any experiences. Um, my wife saw a weird, like four or five foot tall shadow being run across our yard super fast. Um, that was a couple months ago. That was probably the most recent experience we've had. So my life has been pretty pretty paranormal, I would say. So they seem to be following you. I think they're following me. Yeah. So okay, well, let's talk about your uh, childhood uh, contact. Uh... So, uh, the, you you got abducted at the age of six. What happened? Can you get into details of the yeah. event? So, uh, I woke up super late at night. Um, yeah, so it was, it was, uh, it was late at night, um, probably 10, 11 o'clock. Um, I didn't have a, a, a clock in my room at the time. It wasn't that year yet. You know what I mean? Um, uh, and I'm just, I wake up in bed and my room just fills with light. 
Um, it's just like a blinding bluish white light. Uh, it left no shadows in the room. That that was a big. Uh, that was something that I noticed mostly. Is like there were no shadows. Everything was lit up. Um, and then off to my right, because my where my bed was oriented, it was on the left side of the room, and my window was on the right. And these two beings just materialized out of nowhere. Just bam! One second they're not there. Next second they're there. And they look like your typical greys, um, but they wore these like tight fitting silvery glittery suits. Um, and I felt a telepathic voice say, come with us. And so I just wasn't controlling my body. I don't know if they made me go or what was going on or I was like, hypnotized or what. Uh, I got out of bed. I walked over to them. And then the next thing I know, I'm just flying up through the sky. Um, I could see the, the night sky, I could see the city lights below, um, and I'm just flying up towards this white, blue light. And the next thing I know, I'm standing on this, like, large, circular, raised pad in, like, this large hangar area. And I remember everything was, like, eggshell white panels with, like, concave, like, blue metal beams. And I remember seeing these orbs these like large silver orbs parked off to the left and they're leading me around towards these spheres and then i get scared and i run off down this uh long hallway to the right so like if i was standing when we, when we arrived on this pad the hallway was to my right so i took off down that hallway and i remember coming to a large like window and when i looked out the window uh, i was trying to like see where i was at and I just saw the blackness of space. I couldn't see any stars. And I just, what I thought was the earth below me to the left, like down to the left, I could see like the the brightness glow, almost kind of like how your background looks there. It's like that glow of the planet below. And I get even more scared. I run down the hallway and I come to like this uh, conjunction hallway down towards the end. And I see this human like being crouched down at some boxes and they stand up and grab me, and another telepathic voice says, like, whoa, hey, you're not supposed to be here. And um, that's when the greys, the, the two greys that were leading me around, came back and grabbed me. And I, I don't know if they, like, froze me or, like, put lock on me, but I couldn't move. And my hands were, like, in a, like, gooseneck hold. And they were either carrying me or floating me back down this hallway that I came from. And they led me to a room where I saw this large insect praying mantis looking being standing off into the corner to the right uh, on this like large science station looking thing. There were like tubes, screens, beakers, like all kinds of crazy looking shit. And they, the graves laid me down on this table that was to the left of that. And I remember laying down on the, it was, it was a cold table. It was like reclined at an angle almost. And the large insectoid thing came around uh, to the right, and I remember seeing the greys just standing off to the right. And as it, uh, as a large insect mantis thing came around, it stood behind me, looked down at me, grabbed my head, turned it to the left, and then stuck like a large needle uh, into my neck, where my like right behind where my ear meets the neck. And uh, then when that was done, everything went like fuzzy. Everything was like very uh, hazy, uh, almost like I was like half, uh, half under anesthesia. You know what I mean? I was very groggy. Um, and then the greys pick me up off the table and then take me to another room off to the left. And in this room was like a small black box that they gave me. And they had me open the box, and when I opened the box, it, like, exploded into light. Everything, I couldn't see the, the room anymore. It was just nothing but white light. And I remember seeing um, almost like how movies will have, like, when they go back revisiting a memory, they'll, like, pan the camera off to the left and, like, bring up a fuzzy window of, like, what was going on. Everything kind of looked like that, but, like, there were, like, multiple screens of multiple, like, memories, images, maps um symbols just random stuff and then what stuck out to me the most was a memory of my own past life my previous like my most recent previous past life 
where they showed me the death of my family, uh, my, my own suicide. Uh, it was very traumatic. And when that was over, they closed the box. They led me back down the hallway that I had originally ran down back to the pad and then they floated me back down into my room and then laid me down like laid me down into bed and they went fast uh towards my window turned around and another telepathic voice said uh we'll be seeing you again soon and then they just blinked and they were gone wow now my, my room was just left in darkness i was just sitting there like sitting up in bed not moving like i just i don't even think i went to bed that night do you recall going through the walls? I don't. And uh, now once once you were on board, did you get a good idea of how big the hangar was? Massive. Um, it was probably three stories tall, maybe. Okay. And uh, how many type of ETs were on the craft? So I could see the grays, so like in that main hangar area, uh, off to my right, like at my two o'clock facing, um, I could see what looked like a uh, like an elbow table, like almost like you'd have like at a receptions desk, uh, but it was more uh, I don't even know how to explain it, like a very uh, industrial, sleek look, if that makes sense. Um, and there were like more of these tall human looking beings like congregating with more of these small greys. And then I didn't see any mantids in there. All I saw were like the tall humans with the greys. And then the only place I saw the mantid was was in that little like room where they stuck the needle in my neck. And that was it. Was he was wearing just... anything like robes or? I, I swear he was wearing like a small coat looking looking thing on the back uh, that wrapped around like his upper torso. Okay. When you got the the needle, uh, was it painful? Um, no. What hurt the most was like the gooseneck hold my arms. Okay. Amazing. Um. So. So okay. So see. So they said they're going to come back. So mm -hmm. how long? before they came back? Um, to my memory, at least, um, I didn't start seeing the grays again until my mid-20s. So, at least to my memory, or they could have visited. I don't know. I don't yeah. have any memory of it. Okay. So what happened then uh, during your uh, next contact? Uh, the next one they I saw was the one in Chicago was when um, we were doing uh, CE5 stuff. And then later, maybe two weeks after we were doing that kind of stuff, we got a visit by that tall white being. I remember we weren't even doing anything that night and we were just hanging out late at night. We just got done watching TV. Uh, my wife was going to the bedroom to get ready for bed. And then I was shutting everything down. Um, and I had gone into the kitchen to grab my water or drink or whatever it was off the table. And you know how, like you just instinctively go into a room, flip the light switch, you just know where it's at. Um, I flipped the light on and through the sliding glass door on our, uh, second story balcony, um, I could see like this large, tall, pale white thing staring at me and then in that split second, it took off running, got onto our balcony, which is like the size of rebar, like you know the like this, like this very thin metal gate that holds up for the balcony railing, and gets on top of our roof in like less than two seconds. I mean, it, it was quick, and it just ran across our uh, our roof and just left. And then I remember in that instant, I could see its leg, and it was very thin pale and you could see the tendon behind its knee like how we have except it was more protruded and and it was it was like it came like halfway up its thigh to halfway below the knee 
and it was just massive. And then it just took off running. I took off running to the bedroom to tell my wife what I had seen. And all through like the next couple hours, we could hear this like metallic hissing, almost like hydraulics releasing pressure. And we just felt like this constant feeling of being watched. Um, nothing happened for a couple hours except that. And then we decided to go to bed and just shake it off. Like if it's something's going to happen, something's going to happen. If not, then if not go to bed. And then my wife wakes up probably like two, three o'clock in the morning to go turn off our fan. And as she's getting back into bed, she sees this same being crouched down in our room, right by our dresser, just staring at us. And she grabs her phone, turns on the light and she could see it for a split second. And then it just vanished, blinked out of existence, just gone. And she said it was pale white, had an egg shaped head and those large almond black eyes. And then, nothing happened after that that was and then uh yeah that was it and then the next visitation was the uh the cloaked beings um that looked like predator they're probably three four foot tall uh, six of them coming down the the mountain when we lived out here in the, the tri-cities area in washington so uh did the being try to get into contact with you no 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 uh, telepathic contact no it felt like it was just watching I don't know if it tried to initially when it was standing outside the uh, the doorway and maybe my reaction scared it away. I don't, I don't know. Uh, coming back to your childhood, did you ever get like these nosebleeds? I get them all the time, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, a lot of them uh, tend to, at least the, the people I've been involved with and interviewed, they've had nosebleeds. They've all, they tend to get like implants, things stuck up mm -hmm. their nose. So uh, that could be a, a contributing factor. Um, could be. I've, I've always had issues with my nose. I can't even, I can barely smell. Okay. That could be a reason. Uh, coming back to the, uh, the shot, do you have like a, a mark where that, where the implant yeah, was? I, I mean, the, the I needle? I think I have an implant right here because I can feel it. It's like the size of a grain of rice, maybe half of that. And like I can pinch it between my fingers, move it around underneath the skin. And I actually have a uh, doctor's appointment coming up uh, soon to get some x-rays. So hopefully I can get some answers on that. Yeah. Let's get into your, your, the, your next contact event with the, mm -hmm. uh, the beings coming down the hill. So what happened? So it, it was the first night we moved to Washington. It was in the tri cities near uh, Richland and when we went to bed it was probably one o'clock and like we just got into town right and i remember going to bed and then waking up and i remember seeing this tall i swear to god it looked like a a, a werewolf it looked like a fucking dog's head or some shit peeking in around the corner in the top right of our window it scared the shit out of me right I jump up out of bed and I go to the window and then I start seeing, I didn't, it, it was gone. And then I remember seeing these small cloaked invisible things running down the hill into our yard and just running around. And it, it, I'm just like, what the hell is going on? And I, I remember waking my wife up. Um, she gets out of bed. She's like, w what's going on? What are you doing? And I'm telling her, like, there's some shit outside right now. And she's like, wants to see what's going on. She gets out of bed, comes to the window. And I remember recording. It was like I was live streaming to uh, my Discord group at the time. And uh, we were all watching these things. And one of them had ran up to the window and scared me knocked me off balance and as i went to go grab my phone to record it standing in front of the window uh my hand locks up and goes into that same gooseneck hold and it like it's only my only my wrist up was locked and it was the hand i was going to grab my phone to record it with and i believe it's it didn't want to be recorded and so it did that and stopped me from recording it and after that night all of the footage was corrupt it was all very blocky, very low quality. And like none of my other photos or videos are like that, at least for that phone. And then we were just watching these things coming down off the hill, running through the yard, just be like, they looked playful. Um, 
nothing happened. There was no communication. We were just, they were just watching, playing. We just watched it. Did you ever figure out why you've been having these experiences? No. Nope. Strange. It's one of my top questions, though, if I ever see him again. Yeah. Because you, you, I'm not sure if you had a contract signed with them or uh, perhaps your family bloodline's got something interesting going on. I don't know. Wow. Um, did you ever have missing time? A couple of times, yeah. I remember walking home when I was living in Arizona. Um, uh, I walked, I remember, because I would walk everywhere. It was it was nice place, nice out, sunny, it was warm. I liked walking places in Arizona, you know what I mean? So I had walked to a place that was probably 45 minutes to an hour away. It was a nice walk, a couple miles away. And on the way back, it only took me 15 minutes. And I don't know how I got to the end of my, my walk. Like one moment I just left the area I was at. And like the next moment I was like five minutes away from my house. And like, I, I, I even questioned uh, the people I was hanging out with at the time. Like, Hey, like, did I text you? Like, did, did something happen? And never figured it out. So your wife had these experiences with you. How did she cope with this? Um, she's a distance observer um she believes in this stuff but she relinquishes all that duty through alien contact to me she so doesn't like anything being in the house she doesn't like ghosts in the house she doesn't like spirits in the house she wants our house cleansed cleaned uh we're very spiritual people we we, we smudge and save the house yeah same for me um yeah but the the, the last time i smudged was um Back in 2015, the on year's Eve. Mm -hmm. And um I went outside to do a C5. Nothing happened that time. Go back inside. That's when I smudged. And uh I go to bed. Uh my dad was out with his new girlfriend and I was taking care of his puppy. And uh, I was a bit sad because uh I've had like contact and you know the contacts were a bit slow, I think, during that time. And mm -hmm. uh during the night not expecting anything. I So I was sleeping on my left side and I get an electric shock behind the ear, like mm -hmm. the size of a finger. It was so powerful that it woke me up. Thinking I was being attacked, I started kicking in the air. Uh, nothing's, I guess, you know, nobody, no one was there. So I look at the clock. It was 1, 1, 1 a.m. Exactly. Oh, wow. Yeah. So they, I've been hurt sometimes when people get taken and they're being brought back. They, they get, they receive this sort of electric shock to wake them up. Hmm. Could have been that, or it could have been just uh, like a quick hello. We uh, we called, we came, and that's it. So, yeah, that's interesting. And uh, okay, so you um, so after all of these experiences, you finally decided to get a a regression done. Yeah. So it was. Uh, so I didn't know. So for the longest time, from six to my early twenties, um, it was just a recurring nightmare. Uh, and in that nightmare, I was um, going, I was being led to a white house. And in this house, they led me up a staircase. And then inside this room was, it was a bedroom, a white bedroom. And then there was a praying mantis phasing in through the wall and a, a large bed, like a king size bed uh, in the middle of this white room. And I remember in, in this recurring nightmare, I would go lay down on this bed, unable to move, looking up at this praying mantis, looking down at me. And that was it. So for the longest time, that has always stuck in my head until I started getting into like a very open-minded mindset uh, in my like late teens, early twenties, and then started experimenting with like uh, the paranormal and, all, all those different rabbit holes and it led me to start questioning my nightmare, like my recurring nightmare. And so in my late 20s, I was able to see somebody offering pro bono hypnoregression sessions to people who they believed were abducted. And, I, and putting all these pieces together, it aligned with my recurring nightmare. And so I was like, hey, this might have happened. Um, I reached out to him, explained my story, explained my dream, and we set up an appointment to do it. And here we are. So you started doing C5s. Was that like a natural thing that came to you? 
Um, yeah, I mean, it, it started becoming more popular in the subreddits I was visiting at the time. Um, I always grew curious of that stuff, so I tried it out, and I had a few successful attempts where I had a few out-of-body experiences induced by some of these beings during meditation. Uh, they brought me to, like, a place of all white, and I wasn't, I did, had no physical body. I was just, like, a single point consciousness, and, like, they were giving me all this information about, like, the universe, life, death, all, all kinds of shit. And I really only had, uh, like, out-of-body experience uh, success with uh, CE5. I've had a, a couple UFOs I've seen, um, some recorded, some not. Um, I recently started my YouTube channel for Project Contact. Um, I'm going to start posting my footage there. I have uh, my guide written there. Um, I started getting heavily involved. I created my own project for CE5. I did the research behind like embodied cognition and like consciousness phenomena and all this different kind of stuff that links CE5 to like the spiritual aspect of it. Created my own guide and I've been helping people try to make contact ever since. Uh, Zach, are you aware if um, any UFOs would follow you while you would uh, be driving or? Uh... No, uh, nothing I'd be aware of, well, or like nothing following me, but I have been driving down the road and I have seen a few UFOs uh, a few times. Um, one of them would be like a like an orb way out in the distance up in the clouds. Or uh, one of them was I was driving down the highway uh, over like across some farmland uh, near central Washington. And this it looked like a, 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 a teardrop that shaped like a number three. And it, it was weird looking. Um, and it just hovered in one spot and then just laterally moved across the highway. And then it just from what I could see, I was driving down the highway, so I couldn't really get a good look at it, but then it just started shooting off. So did you ever get like black shadows in your bedroom, like moving around ghosts, stuff like that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. A couple of times. Okay. I've had a couple instances of uh, like sleep paralysis where there was like something crawling on the floor, growling and snarling. And it was just, freaky i could like i had like an extra sensory perception like where my eyes were closed but i could still see the room i was in i noticed my wife was awake like on her phone and i couldn't move i couldn't talk i couldn't do anything but i realized i could control my breathing and so i just started making myself hyperventilate and she noticed that and woke like shook me awake and then i told her what was happening crazy yeah it was wild but this, your wife, doesn't this freak her out? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She wants nothing to do with it. She, she, she wants, that's me. <laughs> yeah. No, your, your, your experiences are real. So did you ever have, like, contact by the, uh, like, the military or, the like, any government official? Um, I feel like my phone's being tapped, and my wife recently got buzzed by a uh, MH6, a uh, little bird. Um, she was out for a walk, and... Uh, a black small you know what the little birds are right little mh6s um uh, i'm sure you could uh they're the small tactical uh black helicopters i'm sure viewers will might know what they are um anyways it was flying low over the uh residential commercial area and it stopped and hovered right above my wife and then took off um i think we we always get uh black hawks and uh, those same little birds uh, circling our house sometimes. Um, no idea why. Um, kind of just small signs here and there make me think uh, we're being watched at least. Uh, no visits yet. No no knocks on the door yet. Yeah. So how did this uh, all these events change you over time? Um, it made me. Uh, lose I don't want to say like lose sight but like lose my interest in the mundane world like I'm I, I don't want to be a part of like the uh, the capitalist culture I don't want to be a part of like like giving my money like my tax money to like weapons development and war like I, I want to help the world you know what I mean I, I don't want to be a part of the uh, the shit that's making life bad 
Um, I've mainly focused on like my family, my spiritual path. Um, I've lost, I don't know. I've become a lot less materialistic, if that makes sense. I, I've, uh, I used to meditate a lot. And that's when mm -hmm. I had uh, this sort of event that really pushed me into doing what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. um, back in 2012, uh, we thought, you know, the end of the world was coming. And uh, so I, I would meditate a lot uh, in December and I would like send healing with my thoughts. And um, uh, as soon as I went to bed, um, I closed my eyes and I see this sort of black box in front of me in my eyes, like a black and white TV. And in that black and white TV thing, uh, I see uh, an old typewriter uh, side view. And you mm -hmm. know the old typewriters that you have to push the cylinder to yeah. continue? And um, I saw that and somebody was typing. And the, the feeling that I got from that was somebody wanted me to blog by stories, um, my experiences. Hmm. So I go online the next day, start writing things down. And that same night, I start meditating it again, not expecting anything because you know these things were new to me. I've had these experiences all my life, but uh, until I met my experience or fiance at the time, I, I couldn't make uh, heads or tails of what was happening. And I thought everybody was having these experiences. So that's one of the reasons why I never really talked about it. And mm -hmm. that my mother told me to shut up just in case. But um, so during that night, I, I meditate, do the same protocol. And um, I go to bed. As soon as I close my eyes, the black screen, let's say, a black and white screen appears. And I'm seeing two hands shaking on it. Like they were congra congratulating me that of a job well done, let's say. Mm -hmm. So that's what really pushed me on to getting more involved in the, uh, and with the, uh, our people, let's say. And mm -hmm. uh, I started doing interviews. Uh, I did like a few talk shows, conferences. And uh, so I've been doing this ever since. So um, now. Yeah, during my uh, regression, um, I was asked like, or I, I guess I was told, I asked like, what, like, why me? And uh, they said I'm supposed to be a teacher of some kind. And I think it's just, I think that really pushed me to do my project contact and then learn about CE5 and then help others with contact. But as for like, originally, I have no idea why they took me. Did you, I know this is a, like a tough subject, but I've had friends when they were being taken as a kid that they were, they would take bodily fluids from them. So are you aware if they did that I to don't you? I don't remember any of that, no. Okay. I remember my first nightmare, which was probably a screen image. So I'm just sharing just in case that might have, mm -hmm. that might jog your memory. Um, uh, I was about the age of four and, um, I remember seeing a three foot tall boxing glove at the end of my bed doing like standing like this and doing this. Mm -hmm. And I scream out to my folks and my, in that dream, the, uh, my parents come, my dad picks me up and the air is super weird, like out of this world type of like feeling. And, uh, I've never felt that before. And I was pointing to the, the glove and my, my parents couldn't see it. And that, mm. Yeah, and that stuck with me all my life. So I suspect it could be a screen image. Yeah. I, I do know that uh, these beings, these entities, or whatever you want to call them, um, some can mask human perception um, and like hide in the space between dimensions um, and can control their or perceptory, perception link, whatever you want to call it, that, that link that allows us to see them and interact with them and can block others. That's why we can't see them normally, but sometimes our cameras can. Did, um... so, well, it was standing right there and you're, they just hid themselves from your parents. Okay. It's also why I think uh, kids can see these things a lot easier than adults, because we're more uh, open and receptive to that kind of energy. Zach, you sent me an image of uh, like these three symbols. Yes. What are those? Uh, images from the box that they showed me. At least I think they're from the box. Um, I don't know where they came from, though, but I know they're linked to the experience. Uh, I'm pretty sure I saw them in the flash of light. Um, they could have been on the box. They could have been 
Um, I know it was, it had to do with the box. So you never figured out if they meant anything. I have no idea what they mean. Yeah. Did, um, on the, the, uh, the suits that the, the grays were wearing, did they have any symbols? Not that I could see. Um, when I first saw them, it was just completely glittering, silvery, bright. Just, it, it, it looked like a tiny, like thousands of little disco balls uh, strapped on their body, like just completely glittering, like shining. Um, and then when I was on the craft, the suits were just black. Um, I didn't see any insignias, nothing, no symbols, nothing like that. At least not that I noticed. Did you see any um, hybrid children while being on the craft or like I don't, you? I don't remember. No. Um, so when uh, when I was running down the hallway and that large human grabbed me uh, and when they were carrying me back down the hallway, there's a gap in my memory between being led down the hallway and then being led into the room where the mantis was. There's a gap in my memory there, so I don't... I have like 80, 85% of that memory. Well, Zach, it's been fun. Uh, thanks for coming on my show and sharing with everybody your amazing story. And uh, if um, if those that might want to get in touch with you, can they, do they go directly to your YouTube site to get into contact or there's a, an email? Yeah, go ahead and head over to my uh, YouTube channel. Um, uh, it's Project Contact. Uh, I also run the r slash anomalous evidence subreddit and r slash project contact. Uh, you can message me there. Um, other than that, yeah, just find me on my YouTube. Mm. So to those watching today's interview, hope you enjoyed it. I'm your host, Mr. Great. More interviews coming up and I'll see you guys next time. So take care, everyone. Hello, everyone. This is Mr. Great. And thanks for watching today's episode. If you are an abductee, contactee, or experiencer, and you believe that your story could help others, please feel free to contact me through my YouTube channel email. When it comes to experiencers, the ET phenomena, and the future, remember, truth will out.